I, I'm, I'm already going into my message a little bit, but that's what I'm talking about today. But, and like I said, y'all got excused the, the, the sinuses today with all that crying. It, it's going to clear up midway through, I promise. <laughs> it's all right. But I'm sure, like me, many of y'all last week, you, you watched the, uh, the women's college basketball tournament and, and, and the, the championship game. It was so good. It, the entire tournament was good, and, and I'm so happy to see the women's sports finally get the attention that, that they deserve because they do s the same type of training. They, they, they just put their bodies to the limit just like the men, and they just haven't gotten the attention. But somehow this year, by a, a, a few women who are just awesome at what they do, the entire nation was locked in. I don't know what, I don't even, it wasn't until after the men's championship that I realized who had won. But I knew, who, I knew all four teams going into the women's final four. And I knew even more teams than that. I, matter of fact, I even knew players. Me and Pastor Tasha, we watching the games and, and we calling out players' names. Ooh, look, ooh, look at Caitlin. Ooh, look at Gabby. Ooh, 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 ooh look, at, look at Camilla. We, 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 like we know them. You would ask us a, a few months ago, who are these people? We won't know, but because we were so locked in. I know many of you were, were, were locked in a, a, as well. And I got to say, I got such a profound level of respect for, for Coach Don, Dawn Staley of University of South Carolina, just a, an amazing woman. Even without co coaching, she had already had a stellar career. You know, a, a great Hall of Fame college athlete went on uh, to to get two gold medals in the Olympics and went on to, into the WNBA. So she had her resume was already set as a legend or, or what we call today a goat. She was one of the goats, but she, she decided there's more for me. Yeah. There, there, there's definitely more for for, for me to to do. She she realized and and that and and, and, and the title of our series. She realized that there was a greater reward for her. Yeah. There's something greater for for, for me to, to and so I I, I got to continue what, what what I've been doing and, and and do even more. So she decided to go into the coaching ranks, mm -hmm. and coaching is hard. I've been a coach before. It's hard because you got to especially when you when you're coaching students. You got to deal with attitudes. You got to deal with parents. You got to deal with administrators. It, it's it's a, a lot, and and she does it with such grace. And when the the championship game ended, and she was being interviewed, you know it it have been easy for Coach Don to when, when they asked her how she felt about winning the championship. It would have been easy for her to just to just brag on her team, brag on her coaches, and we're we're the best. It, it would have been easy for her to talk about nothing but the team and the game. But Coach Dawn did something different. She took a moment to give praise and honor to God. She took a moment to, to, to give God true honor. And, and, and a reporter asked her what she attributed to her success. And Coach, God, uh, Coach Dawn responded, it's the uncommon favor of God. And when I heard her say that, I said, ooh, that a preach. That, that's one right there. Ooh, that a preach. I didn't think that I would be d doing a, a message by that title, but I said, ooh, that a preach. And she kept on saying it, uncommon favor, uncommon favor. And all of a sudden, people on social media start posting, yes, Lord, uncommon favor, uncommon favor. So I kept hearing it over and over. And then I made a joke. I said, how many pre pastors are pre preaching a message next Sunday called uncommon favor? And then all of a sudden, I started putting my message together. I'm like, oh, I'm pastors. I'm the one who's doing that message titled Uncommon Favor. And so that's the title of today's message, Uncommon Favor. And so back in February, I had to have uh, a couple of me medical procedures done. And one of, the, one of the medical procedures I had done, it required me for four days b b before the procedure, I had to fast from eating nothing. I couldn't eat no foods except one type of food, eggs. <laughs> I could eat them hard boiled. I could eat them scrambled. I could eat them uh, fried or I could eat them raw. Ew, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I couldn't have any salt on it, no flavor, no seasoning, just plain bland 
eggs for four days. And so I was like, well, I like eggs. I, 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 I can do this. And the first day came, and I fixed some, some scrambled eggs, even though I couldn't put no salt and pepper on them. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. But by day number two, y'all, when you can eat nothing but eggs, you become miserable. You, you, oh, oh, it, 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 day number two came, and I had attitude with my family because they, they going out and go, going to, to in and out and going to Chipotle and bringing it, and I'm smelling it, and all I got is a plate of eggs, <laughs> plain, bland eggs. And now to, to and, and so by, by day n- n- number three, I was just struggling, and, and it got to a point to where I, I just didn't eat. I just drank water. I, I didn't eat on day number three. Because just the look and the thought of eggs, is sickened me. <laughs> now, all my life, I had enjoyed eating eggs. But now, because it's all I could eat, now I can't stand them. And so once the procedure was over, I could not wait to go get something to eat. I, I can't remember what I ate, but I know, I know it was something that my body sure enough didn't need. <laughs> but I could not wait. And now, still to, that was two months ago, and still to this day, I still haven't eaten eggs. I, I'm on, I still haven't eaten eggs, and I, I cannot stand eggs. O- on our road trip, we stopped by McDonald's uh, t- to get some breakfast, and, and Pastor Tasha and Monet, they got their egg McMuffin, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. And I, I thought I was ready, but once I saw them eating the eggs, I'm like, mm, no, no. And so it, 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 I, I don't know when I'll get to a point where I will enjoy eating eggs today, but I, I just cannot stand them right now. And so many of you, you would be like me. You, you would be like me where you, you, you re- resent having to give up flavorful foods, good foods, for, even if it was just for a few days. You, you, you would just be resentful and, 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 and you're at a point where whatever that one thing that you had to eat for four days, you would be sick of it for months or, or I don't know how long, maybe for the rest of my life, I may not eat another egg. I don't know. But this experience led me to be fascinated by the story of Daniel and, and his friends. And so I want you now to go with me to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 1. And if you don't have your Bibles, it'll be up on the screen behind me. But in Daniel chapter 1, we're going to read verse, we're going to start at verse 1 through 7. And I'm going to probably skip through a couple, but let, let's just start with verses 1 through 7. It says, During the year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2, the Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judah and permitted him to take some of the sacred objects from the temple of God. So Nebuchadnezzar took them back to the land of Babylonia and placed them in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, his chief of staff, to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah's royal family and other noble families who had been brought to Babylon as captives. He said, select only strong and healthy and good-looking young men, he said. Make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning and are gifted with knowledge and good judgment and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. Verse 5. The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were to be trained for three years, and then they would enter the royal service. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four of the young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. The chief of staff renamed them with these Babylonian names, and some of us know them by these names. Daniel was called Belteshazzar. Hananiah was called Shadrach, Mishael was called Meshach, and Azariah was called Abednego. So Daniel was this young man from the tribe of Judah who, along with his three friends, were brought into captivity. Let's be real, they were now slaves. They were now slaves, and he was was taken because of three things. He was young, he was smart, and he was handsome. Sounds like, like today, we, 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 we pick people, we, we like people, we, we follow people because they're young, smart, and good-looking. 
And so th this is who the king wanted to serve him. The, 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 the cream of the crop is, is what they call him. So, so the king was looking for young men who would become good and wise servants of his. And so the king gave orders to, to feed them from his own kitchen. That means Daniel and, and, and his friends would, would eat whatever the king ate. If the king ate steak, they had steak. If the king had chicken, they had chicken. If the king had cake, they had cake. The finest of wines that they, they, they drank from. So it sounds like it sounds like a sweet deal, right? Even, even though I'm 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 away from 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 my homeland, here I am li living in, in the quarters of the king, eating what he eats, eating the finest of food, the best the best wine. Sounds like a sweet deal to to live in the palace. It, it, it probably seemed to to Daniel and his friends like it was too good to be true. Is, is, is this really happening? This is a little bit too good to be true, to be, to, to be just eating off of the fat of the land while our, our, our people suffer and, and struggle. But we all know what they say about if it's too good to be true, it probably is. It probably is. And so there was a catch for Daniel and his friends. It says, says in, in the scripture, for three years, Daniel would have to learn to speak only the king's language. And his name, of course, was changed. And so, and so basically, in, 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 in order to live this, this, this good life and, and, and live uh, under the king's graces, Daniel and his friends would have to give up, one, their culture, everything that, that they were raised to understand and know and everything that they were proud of. They had to give up their culture and they had to surrender their names. So basically, they had to allow the king to take away their identity. Who they were, who they were as people, they had to allow the king to take that away. But Daniel knew that sacrificing who he was in the eyes of God was not worth it. I don't, I don't care what, what the king is offering me. It, it, it's not worth sacrificing my culture and my name. It's not, it's not giving up my identity and who God has made me to be in order to, be, in order to please a king. See, in this world that we live in, oftentimes we sacrifice our identity to be, pl to be pleasing to others. Because we want to be a part of this group. We want to be a part of this social setting. We want, to, we want to be on this level instead of this level. So there's some things that I have to give up about myself. I, 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 cannot, I cannot bring, you know, that one side of my family. We all got that one side, right? That we can, I can't bring them to this party with me because they're going to tear the place up. So, so I, 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 got, I, got, I got to disassociate myself from some friends. I got to disassociate myself from people in my family. I, 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 cannot, I cannot be who, I, who God has made me to be if I want to be accepted among these people, among this group, among this social setting. And Daniel was at a point where he was saying, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for me to give up my identity. And so if we, when we continue, continue down in, in verse 8, it says, But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to him by the king. So he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Verse 9 says, Now God had given the chief of staff both respect and and affection for Daniel. How uncommon for the servant to find favor with the chief of staff. You are a slave, Daniel. How, you, you are supposed to speak only when spoken to. But somehow God has positioned Daniel to have uncommon favor with the chief of staff to where Daniel could go to the chief of staff, the second in command, and say, hey, I don't want to eat this. Give me something different to eat. Because if I, if I choose to eat this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to defile myself before my God. I choose to honor God, so I need something else. How uncommon for a slave to be able to say that to the slave master. And it continues in, in verse 10, it says, but he responded, this is, this is, this is the, the chief of staff, but he responded, I'm afraid that my lord, the king, who has ordered you to eat this food and wine, if you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I'm afraid that the king will have me beheaded. So basically he said, I can't do what you asked me to do. 
because my boss is going to get me. My, my boss is going to, or going to kill me if, 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 if he knows that, that you're not eating well. And it goes on in verse 11. Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief of staff. Daniel said, okay, you, you don't want to help me? I'm going to go to somebody else. He said, he said Daniel went, went to the attendant who had appointed who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Verse 12, please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. Verse 13, at the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. Not by, not by what you think, but in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days again. How uncommon, how uncommon for the slave to have so much favor that he could go to the chief of staff, didn't get what he wanted and say, okay, I'm going to go to your assistant (laughs) and, and, and tell them to test me. Test me. Just give me vegetables and waters and test me to see if, if, if I don't look just as good or even better than the rest who are eating the king, off of the king's plate. Yeah. How, how uncommon is that? And it continues in, on verse, in verse 15. It says, at the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three fans look healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided for others. Verse 17, God gave these four young men, here it is, unusual aptitude. Let's redefine that and say God gave them uncommon favor for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom, and God gave Daniel the special ability, uncommon favor to interpret the the meanings of visions and dreams. When when the training period ordered by the king was completed, the chief of staff brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and no one impressed him as much as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the royal service. Whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them 10 times more capable. Come on, I need you to get that. He found them 10 times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. When the king needed something to be done, when the king needed wisdom, when the king needed advice, he found Daniel and his boys 10 times more capable than anyone else in the kingdom. That's uncommon favor. How does that happen that you are brought into bondage and just by honoring God, he gave you such uncommon favor that the king now relies on you more than he relies on his chief of staff? That's uncommon favor. See, Daniel made the decision that he was going to honor God and not forget who he was. So who was Daniel? Who, who, who was this Daniel that, that we're talking about that, that was so important that he did not forget who he was? It said in Scripture that Daniel was from the tribe of Judah. Judah, which means that when you look it up in the Hebrew, the word Judah means praise. And so, and so the, the way God ordered the children of Israel when they were going into battle or when they were, when they were moving about or fleeing from Egypt, he always sent the tribe of Judah first. Because God said, before you go into battle, send the praisers first. We're going to, I I need you to worship me. I need you to pray first. I I, I need need you in in, in praise mode before you go into battle. See, sometimes we go straight into battle mode without going into praise mode. And we wonder why we lose the battle. We wonder why things don't work out the way we planned. Because we haven't gone into praise mode first. We can, look, we can look right now what's going on in the Middle East. A lot of war, a lot, a lot, a lot of bombings happen because nobody chose to praise first. I want to encourage you today. 
You, you, you are descended. You, 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 are, you, you are part of the, the tribe of Judah. Go praise first. Amen. When, when somebody talk about you before, before you respond, go praise first. And then after you praise, pray. <laughs> and then respond. I promise your response will be so much different. Before you go to that place that you know you shouldn't be going to, go praise first. But before, before, before you, you open, open that letter or, or, that, or, or that bill thinking that you don't have, to have, have the money to come, go praise first. See, Daniel knew that I'm all, I'm, in spite of what the king offered me, in spite of what he was, was trying to, 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 to indoctrinate me into, I'm going to praise first. This was who he was. This was the, the identity. See, the king was smart. He knew that Daniel was a part of the praisers. So he, he, he knew, I have to change your identity because I know this is in your DNA. You know, in spite of whatever happens to you, I could put you in chains. I could put you in bondage, but I know you're going to praise first. So I have to change who you are. I have to change your identity in order to keep you from praising because he knew when the praises go up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. So this is who Daniel was. And Daniel wasn't going to allow the king to change his identity. Daniel's defiance was sending the message, praise isn't just what I do. It's who I am. Come on, we got to get to the point. Praise isn't just what I do. It's who I am. When, 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 I, when I walk on, uh, uh, into my job tomorrow, uh, I'm, I'm bringing praise with me because that's who I am. See, see when they smell the cologne that I wear, it, it, it's a scent of praise because praise goes with me everywhere I go. It's not just what I do. It's who I am. And that's what Daniel was saying. This is in me. And you could change me. You, you could try to change me as much as you want. You could try to change my name and take away my language. But this is who I am. I'm a praiser. And as Daniel and his friends honored God, God honored them. See, when you honor God, God honors you. Come on, it doesn't matter what, 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 what situation you're in. When you honor God in that situation, God will honor you. They look healthier than, 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 than the, the men who ate the good food. What, 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 was, what was supposed to make them bigger and stronger, they look healthier and stronger than them. They had better ability to understand the, the Babylonian literature and, and, and wisdom because, because uncommon favor made them wiser and smarter. Yeah. These four Israelite men who, who also impressed the king more than any of the others. In fact, they were, it said in verse 20, that they were 10 times more capable than anyone else in the entire kingdom. If that isn't uncommon favor, I don't know what is. And the same God who favored Daniel wants to favor you. Amen. You got to believe that today. Amen. The same God who favored Daniel wants to favor you. Can I let you in on a little secret? God is favoring you in unfavorable situations right now. God is favoring you right now in unfavorable circumstances. Come on, the, the, the out, come on, I'm looking at my brother right now. God has favored you in unfavorable situations and, and circumstances today. He is going to give you extra, no, extraordinary benefits and special treatment to announce to everyone that his hand rests on your life. See, you, see my brother, he don't, he don't have to say nothing. You can just look at him and say, the hand of God rests on his life. Because of that uncommon favor. He, he, he's, he's going to give you such special treatment and, 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 and special extraordinary benefits that everywhere you go, people are going to see God's hand and favor yeah. on your life. Yeah. 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 Right. Come on, you ever, you ever been somewhere, seen somebody, and, and you just knew just by looking at them across the room, the hand of God is on them. Yeah. I don't know what it is about them. Come on. I, I've been some places with Pastor Tasha and people come from across the room up to her and say, there's something about you that I just had to come and just meet you. There's just something, but the, the favor of God is just on you. And that's where Daniel was. And you can be in that same place today where the, where the favor of God, his hand just rests upon your life, not just on, on your situation, not just on you in the moment, but rest, his hand rests upon your life. That means 
every yeah. day of your life. That means everything that you do, every thought that you think, every dream that you have, every goal that, that you go, go, go after. His hand is resting on that. So you can walk boldly knowing, God I got this. God I got this. I know we're in young and new church and, and we see so many empty seats, but I see the, the favor of God's hand upon this ministry. So I don't worry about that. I say, God, you got this. <laughs> your, your, your hand rests upon your church, not mine. Your hand rests upon your church. Favor in unfavorable circumstances. And I know sometimes we feel like the circumstances must be perfect for God to, to favor us. We, we, we got to be in the right place. We got to be we got to be in the right setting. The, 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 the worship needs to be just right. And, and, and but, but God often does his best work in the worst situations. In, 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 the, in the most in the most unfavorable situation, in, in, the, in the most disorganized situation, that's where God's work is, is, is most powerful, though. Everything isn't perfect in your life right now. And you may be facing some challenges. I want to say first, me, too. Me, too. But I want to say that he is giving you uncommon, supernatural, undeniable favor anyway. Yeah, I know it ain't perfect. Yeah, I know it hurts. Yeah, I know it's difficult. Yeah, I know it's confusing. But I want to let you know that God is giving you uncommon favor anyway, even though it's difficult, even though it's confusing, even though it's painful. Anyway, God is giving you uncommon favor. What the enemy thought he could use to, to bind you, God is using to bless you. Come on, did you get that? What the enemy is trying to use to bind you up, God is using to free you. Come on, what, what Satan thought w w would hold you back, God is using that same thing to push you forward. What your adversary thought would hold you down, God is using that same thing to lift you up. See, in this season, God is making you a prime example of uncommon favor. And if you believe that, say it, just say it right now. God, God, make me a prime example. Come on, make me a prime example. God, I want to be a prime example of your uncommon favor. I want people just to look at me and see, that's a prime example of what God can do. I want atheists to look at me and say, I, I don't believe, but there's, that's a prime example. Of, if I did believe, that's a prime example of God's favor on him. That's a prime example of uncommon favor. So I, 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 it's making me question some things that I once thought, but hmm, there's something, uh, there's something about that person. God is, God is making you a prime example of his uncommon favor. And as God proved through the lives of Daniel and his friends, he's going to prove in your life that he specializes in turning unfair disadvantages into fair advantages. Yeah, thank you. Unfair disadvantages yeah. into fair advantages. Yeah. See, I, I, there's this, this Christian hip hop song that, that I listened to. Uh, it was probably like 20 years ago, but by Canton Jones. And in and, and, and one of his lyrics, he say, favor ain't fair, but somebody got to get it. And I'm so glad it's me. <laughs> favor ain't fair, but somebody got to get it. And I'm, I'm glad it's me. So, so it, it, that, that's true. If favor ain't fair, but somebody got to get it, it might as well be you. It might as well be you. It might as well be me. Come on. Favor ain't fair, but somebody got to get it. And I'm so glad that God has given us not only just favor, but uncommon favor. Some of you, some of you know a bit of my story when it comes to uncommon behavior. Y'all, if you looked up, if you looked at my job, it, it looks like I shouldn't be in that job. If you looked at my job description and the requirements to hold my position, there is no way I should have the job that I have. The job said it requires a, a master's degree. I ain't got that. It, 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 requir it, it required it, it even, even um, um, they, they wanted you to have what was called an MBA. I don't have that. But I did have something that other candidates didn't have. Uncommon favor. Uncommon favor is what, what I had. See, even though when, when, when someone came to my desk when I was working in Savannah and, get, and gave me the job, job description and then the job announcer said, hey, that's for you. 
Even though I'm, I'm born and raised here in Northern California and, and, and I, I had a desire of, of moving back to Northern California, when I saw it was from UC Davis, I said, nope, that is not for me. Because if you, know, if you know my story, even when I was graduating high school, I listened to so many people that told me, don't apply there. That, that you, you won't get in. And, and plus, there's not a lot of black people in Davis. So, so don't, don't, don't even apply there. It, it, it's, not, it's not a good place for you. you. They probably won't accept you. So I listened to these people, and I decided not to apply. And so for, for years after that, every time I thought about UC Davis and Davis, I, I would think, oh, it's never the place for me. And, 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 and then w when I went on to, to go to college at Sac, at Sac State, I, I end up in a car accident because I was, I was going back and forth to the Bay Area because I was dibbling, dabbling in, in the music industry. And I got into a car accident in Davis. I got in that car accident. And the first thing I thought, here we go again. This one place that continued to deny me and, and just caused me so much pain has now caused me even greater pain. And so when you, if, if you tell me to apply to, to, to a, a job that's in Davis, California, I'm going to quickly say no. And so I looked back over my life and over the, the, the past 15 years or so that I've been working, and I realized that God was already setting me up for uncommon favor. You see, when I started working in, in the education field, I started w working w which w w in, in, in what my background was, was accounting. And I had this low level accounting position because we were coming out of recession. And so I just needed a job because I had a young family. And so I went and interviewed and, and the person, the hiring manager said, I'm going to offer you this job, but I'm going to let you right, know right now, this is a dead end position. Within two years, you're going to be out of here. Because there's nowhere to go. There's no opportunity for promotion. There's, there's nothing to, to, for, for you to do. It's, it's, just, it's just a low-level job, and, and, and it has, no, it has no, no, no career path. I said, okay, I'll take it. Okay. I'm going to take it anyway, and I'm, I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to honor God. That, that, that I, I believe that, that he's going to just set me up for something, for something greater, so I'm going to take it. So while I, I took the job, and while everyone around me treat, treated their role as this dead-end job, I chose to honor God. I chose to honor God in that, that dead end job. And everyone knew that there was some favor upon me. I didn't even have to tell anybody. I, I would just walk through the building and students and faculty and other staff members would look at me and say, are you a minister? There's just something about you. There's just something about you. And while everyone else would, 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 would steal and, and lie and, and, and gossip, I chose to, to honor God in that dead end position. And while everyone else was rude to, to students and, and being mean to students, I chose to honor God and show compassion to the students. And so within a year of working that, that dead-end position with no chance of promotion, I got promoted. <laughs> and over the next three years, I got promoted three more times. Come on, I, I went from being a low-level accounting clerk to now I'm, I'm, I'm a financial aid counselor to assistant director of financial aid to director of financial aid and then director of two campuses without having any educational background in this job role. Uncommon favor. And so when I thought about that, like, God, you've been blessing me for these past few years to get me to where I am without the qualification, without the skills. I'm going to go ahead and apply to that one place, that one job that I said that I would never go to because if they didn't accept me as a student, they sure enough won't accept me as a professional. Lo and behold, <laughs> y'all know where I work now. So I, you, you, know how the, you know how the story ends, and there's uncommon favor. And, 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 and just to show how God is, is still working with me, I, I had to give a, a presentation. We came straight from New York, and, and the next morning, last week, I had to give a, a, give a presentation early in the morning. And one of the students came up to me afterwards. I don't, I, I don't tell people what I do on Sundays at work. But for some reason, they could see it on me. And I had one of these students come up to me and said, excuse me, Pastor Everett. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, what did you say? Because everyone calls me Director Everett. But this one student came up to me and said, excuse me, Pastor Everett. 
I said, how did you know? You follow me on social media or something? What's going on here? You stalking me or something? She said, no, it, I, it just seems like you, there's favor on you. Like, like, like you're, you're a pastor, aren't you? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And so it, I, I tell that story because some, you don't have to, when you walk into some circles and the, and the hand of God is on you, you don't even have to identify yourself. You don't have to say, Pastor Trey is here. <laughs> it's on you. And people can see the favor of God on your life. Just like the king, even before Daniel even decided that I'm not going to eat from your food, the, the king knew that there was favor on him and his boy's life. There's uncommon favor when you honor God. He will turn your unfavorable common circumstances into uncommon favor. I want to finish with, with, with uh, go, going to the book of Isaiah re re really fast. Isaiah 58, 10 and 11. It says here, it says, if you pour out yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord, here we go, and the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places. He will satisfy your desire in, in, in dead places. He will satisfy your desire in uncommon places, in, in, in places where you, you, you're supposed to fail, in places where you're not supposed to be accepted. It said he will satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like, uh, like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. In other words, God will promise to give you uncommon favor. If you honor God wholeheartedly, God will give you favor that doesn't even make sense. Like, God, it, it don't make sense that you're blessing me. After what I've done, after what I've said, after what I've drank, smoked, ate, it doesn't, it, God, it doesn't make sense that you're giving me favor. And, and you see, when, when you decide in that moment to honor God, he will give you that kind of favor that don't make sense, the kind of favor that just seems illogical, in, in, incomprehensible. It is just unexplainable that, God, you're, you're blessing me right now. The kind of favor that, that, that in dark situations, you will be the light. <laughs> the, the kind of favor that in, in sadness, you will be the joy. Yeah. The kind of favor that in brokenness, you will be whole. That uncommon favor, God will give it to you when you honor him wholeheartedly and not just honor him on Sundays, not just honor him when, when things are favorable. Come on. Sometimes, oh, it, things are good right now. It, I, I got a little bonus in, 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 my, in my paycheck. Things are good right now. So, Lord, I'm going to honor you right now. But you got to learn to honor him in dark places as well. You got to learn to honor him in difficult situations. You got to learn to honor him in places where he's not honored in order to get that uncommon favor. See, anybody can get common favor. But it takes somebody who honors God wholeheartedly to get the uncommon favor. All throughout the Bible, I'm, I'm, I'm about to close. All throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we see men and women who've experienced uncommon favor with God. I love the story of, of Joseph. Joseph was somebody else who was sold into slavery. Matter of fact, he was sold into slavery by his brothers. How low can you get? And as he was a slave, the wife of his master tried to force him to sleep with her. But he said, I cannot disobey my God. I'm not going to dishonor my God. And because of that one moment of honoring God, it, it was like a snowball effect. And it led to Joseph becoming the most powerful person in all of Egypt behind Pharaoh. Wait a minute. You were brought here in bondage and chains. You, you, you were supposed to be working the fields. You were supposed to be ser serving the king his food. You, you, you were supposed to be the lowest of the low, but now because you honor God, God has given you such uncommon favor that you're now, get this, 
Joseph, you're now leading the country. You're now leading the region that your people, that your ancestors fleed from. Come on, you got to get that, that uncommon favor that God will bring you back to places that once were painful for you. Come on, I was in a car today that almost lost my life in, in, in Davis. 20 something years later, God has brought me back to the place that brought me so much pain to give me uncommon favor. God wants to do the same thing for you. He's going to bring you back to that situation. He's going to bring you back to that place of hurt. But instead of you were being reminded of that pain and that hurt, he's going to give you uncommon favor in that situation. You got to believe it today. Joseph became the most powerful person in all of Egypt. David, scrawny little something. Scrawny little something. He was even overlooked by his father so much that his father didn't even invite him in, into the room when they were coming to select the next king. He said, go look at my other sons because they're big and strong and handsome. And, and, and after it, he, he looked at them, after Solomon looked at them, he said, none of these work. I'm sorry, not, not, not Solomon. Sam, Samuel looked at them and said, none of these work. This is not who God wants. Do you have any other sons? He said, all I got is a little scrawny one outside with, with the sheep. <laughs> Daniel out there with the sheep, and it probably was stinking and everything else, but they said, bring him in. And lo and behold, that's the one God was looking for. David got the uncommon favor even though he was out there just, just supposed to be tending his sheep, David was the one who defeated much stronger enemies. David was the one who honored God and praised God so much that he became the king of Israel. Job was on his deathbed. He lost everything. <laughs> lost his family, lost money, lost, lost everything, and his friends Make, most was mocking him, saying, you, you, st you still honoring God? After everything that you've been through, after everything that you've lost, you, you, why are you still honoring this God of yours? And, and Job never, never resisted, said, I'm going to continue to honor God. I'm going to still bless God, and, and I'm not going to give up on him. And then he was healed, and he recovered everything that he lost. Uncommon favor. Mary Magdalene, can't forget about the ladies. Mary Magdalene was once possessed by demons. Yes, she played an integral role, an important role in Jesus' ministry. You see, I, I really encourage you to do some research on Mary Magdalene because, because the, 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 the new modern-day writers, of, or should I say the translators of, of, of Scripture, have, have put this, this moniker on Mary Magdalene that she was this, this, this destitute woman or, or this woman who, who was not to be associated with. I'll just put it that, that way lightly. But no, Mary Magdalene was a woman of resources. She, she was a woman that without her resources, without, come on, even without her money, a lot of the, the ministry of Jesus couldn't go forward. She was the one who, who, who facilitated a, a, a lot of places that they went. She went ahead of them to make sure that everything was in order and organized. And, and even though this woman was once possessed by, it said, it said in the scripture, by seven demons, God gave her uncommon favor. Uncommon favor so much that she was the first person to encounter the risen Christ on Resurrection Sunday. Uncommon favor. So what do these people have in common? They all honored God. They all honored God in return. God honored them and gave them uncommon favor. And the last thing, God wants to do the same thing for you. He wants to give you that same type of uncommon favor. The, the kind of favor that you find not from any books or research, because when we sometimes look at what the formula says to do, what the calculations say, what the weather forecast says. We, we, we find ourselves coming up with, with, with a common solution to a common problem. But for those uncommon situations that we face, we got to have some uncommon favor. That can only come from honoring God. 
So I want to encourage you today as you leave here to make the declaration over your life. God, I'm going to honor you in those unfavorable circumstances. Come on. I know some of you may be facing something right now. I know I know there's some future homeowners and you, you're probably hesitant to fill out that loan application because it, it just seems uncommon that somebody with my income level, my credit status, it just seems like I, I, it's the, 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 the situation is not favorable for me. But it's in those unfavorable situations that God works best. He wants to give you uncommon favor. You're probably wondering for, for my young people filling out that, that college application for that school that, that everyone says that you won't get it accepted and you won't get you won't get admitted. God is ready to give you uncommon favor. He's just waiting for you just to do your part and fill it out. For those of us who who, who are going through some some health issues. I mean, maybe dealing with it for, for some time and, and we're afraid to go to the doctor. We, we, we don't want to hear the, the news that the doctor wants to give us. But even if the news is unfavorable, God will still wants to give you uncommon favor yeah. in those unfavorable conditions. I look out uh, back over my life and uh, Pastor Tasha mentioned it briefly this morning. I looked at the unfavorable conditions that she was facing. She, she suffered from a ruptured brain aneurysm six years ago. And it said, anyone who has a ruptured brain aneurysm has a 50-50 chance of survival off of just one. Once they began the surgery, they found that she had two others that have yet to rupture. So her chances of survival were even slimmer. And so as I'm reading the, these facts and figures, it's saying that her chances of survival are very slim. And I'll be honest, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, Lord, am I about to lose my wife? Am I, is, is, is this the end for her? But then I opened a magazine, y'all. And I started reading through this ma ma magazine and, 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 I, and I, I looked. This, this happened in, in, in the month of September. It happened on September 11th. And we all know what, what September 11th means to this country, but it means something different to me. But on September 11th, I look up and I'm reading this magazine. I look up and there's a poster on the wall and says September is Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month. So you would mean that my wife is having a brain aneurysm the same month that people are raising awareness on this uncommon disease. So I kept reading. I said, okay, that's a little uncommon. But okay, I read this magazine and I stopped at an article that w was highlighting the world's best neurosurgeon. And I stopped and I started reading. I said, this man looks familiar. Two hours later, this man was, co was coming out of, the, uh, out of my, my wife's room to meet with me and saying, t giving me advice on what needs to be done. This man that I'm seeing in the magazine is now in the operating room, operating on my wife's brain. How uncommon that she would be away from home. We lived in Georgia, she was in Ohio, and, and that's when the aneurysm happened. How uncommon that now she's in the operate, on the operating table in the hands of the world's best. Only by God's uncommon favor. Only by God's uncommon favor. That just doesn't happen without God's favor. And so it was in that moment I knew God's hand is on, upon this situation. God's hand is upon my wife. God's hand has already been on this doctor's hands because he's world renowned as the best in his field in doing this. God will place you in positions and places to make sure that you are encountering the best in their field. If you're going into the, in, need, in the need of, of, of health, go. Because God is going to create a divine appointment for you. And you're going to encounter someone who's the best in their field. If you're looking for that loan for, for that house, go in and apply because God is going to make you go, going to create a divine appointment for you to meet with the best in their field to give you the best advice to qualify for that loan. Uncommon favor. And lastly, with my daughter, who was born three months premature, no bigger than the palm of my hand, weighed less than three pounds. Doctors were warning me that mm, it's not looking good. 
while my wife is is is, is trying to recovery from for, recover from from an early d- delivery, doctors are telling me it's not looking good. And even if your daughter does survive, she's going to be likely two years behind everyone else her age. So while other kids right now are are preparing to graduate high school, your daughter may just now be entering high school. But it's God's uncommon favor, y'all, Amen. that I look at my daughter today and she has brought home nothing less than a B plus. Come on. That's, that she was reading on a college level in the fourth grade. It's that uncommon favor because when she was in that NICU room a, 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 as a baby in this incubator where I couldn't even touch her, but she could hear my voice. And the only thing that, that I would say to her and I, I would just sing this song, what God has for me, it is for me. I know without a doubt that he will bring me out. And I just kept singing that over her. And then it, 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 I, every time I would visit her, I would sing that. It, it, was, it, it was to the point that the nurses knew when I was coming. And they would prepare the room for, for, for my arrival. And they would bring all the other incubators a- around my daughter so, I could, so that the other babies could hear this song as well. The nurses were preparing the room for a praiser to enter the room. Yeah. Like a Daniel, the nurses were preparing the atmosphere for praise, even though it wasn't in their job. Even though the, these babies may have come from different cultures and backgrounds and religions, these nurses were preparing the room for praise because if it could do it for one baby, it could do it for all of them because every time that I sung that song for some reason M- Monet's heart heart rate started to go up all of a sudden the blood started to function right all of a sudden she started to, to grow and the lungs were, 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 were operating on their own without any need of any artificial device because of the praisers went in the room bring your praise into the room and expect uncommon favor I'm a living witness to uncommon favor in my life And I believe that God is not done with me. He's not done with you. There's uncommon favor on the way for you. God is just asking for you to honor him. Say no when everybody else is saying yes. But just honor him. And he will grant you uncommon favor. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father in heaven.